Helen, so is uh is this okay for your is um you, you may test your voice here? Sure. Yeah. Is this good? Yeah. 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 It's really good. So okay. uh, you can screen. Great. Let me start sharing. Yep. Okay. Yeah. We we saw the the Chrome. Okay. Good. Yeah. It's it's good now. Great. Yeah. Okay. So I hand the time to you. All right, great. Thank you, Patrick. So uh, I'm jealous of that previous session. You actually had people in person near each other. That was fantastic. I, I wish uh, for the day that we can all do that again. So um, welcome, everybody, to my session. This is uh, Alan Glickenhaus with IBM. I am the digital transformation and API business strategist. And um, I'll switch to the next slide and introduce what I, what I do. Um, I have a great job. I, I work with businesses all over the world, all different industries, all different sizes on what they're thinking about doing with digital transformation and API economy. Um, I share what I'm seeing going on around the world, best practices, bad practices, uh, things that work, things that don't work. And I do that through either one-on-one -on -one, uh, discussions with businesses or I come to API days events and, and speak to, uh, to a lot of people at once. Uh, when I'm not doing that, I'm writing about it. And so I've written, I think it's now over 160 different pieces of information in various forms, uh, papers, blogs, videos, um, interviews, things like that, in the topics that you see listed here. And, and the numbers that are next to each one of these topic areas are the number of articles that I've written in each one of those, those uh, topics. And at the end of this presentation, there are uh, some backup slides, which we will give you that have links to all of my content. So you're welcome to take a look at everything that I've written. If you're having trouble sleeping at night, this is a great uh, cure for that. So uh, today we're going to speak about the state of the API economy. This is what I'm seeing going on and, and uh, where I think it's gonna go fr from here. So what is the state of the API economy? And the answer is it's very strong. What did you expect the API uh, strategist to tell you that it was not doing well at an API days conference? So of course it's it's doing strong, it's doing well, but but the question is is why, right? So why do I say that? What what kind of justification can I give you for why I think the API economy is is still going strong? And, and so what I'm going to do is take you through some of what I'm seeing happening in the marketplace, um, things that are working, and maybe a few things that are not working, and and, and where things are. So. I just wanted to start off with um, a few macro trends. These are things that are happening in businesses all over the world that uh, are using APIs and, and uh, are driving the use of APIs and continue to drive the use of APIs. And, and the first one, and probably the first one that most businesses think about is agility and time to market. Um, this has been an age old problem for, for many businesses uh, forever. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been in IT for a very long time. And uh, I remember from the early days, people saying that the business wants something and IT says 12 or 18 months and, and you know, nobody's happy about that, right? So through the use of APIs and microservices now as well, uh, businesses are, are able to deliver capabilities um, from IT without having to change the backend systems for each time that the business wants to do something new. And, and so this use of APIs uh, is providing agility, and this is one of the big drivers that uh, that are keeping the API economy strong. The other one, um, which we're seeing a tremendous amount of nowadays, is cloud. Um, almost every business I speak to, if not everyone, is, is doing or thinking about doing or has done uh, some kind of movement of some assets into the cloud. And, and so uh, they're doing it for whatever reasons, cost, agility, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different reasons why people are doing it. But the challenge is that when I move things to the cloud, I don't want to, I can't afford to be so disruptive to all of my consumers, my customers. Um, you know, I don't want every single application that is needing to access a backend system to have to all change at the same time every time I choose to move something to a different place. And so what we want to gain is location transparency of where these things are. Today they're on premise and tomorrow they're on Amazon and the next day they're on Google. And finally they end up in the right place on IBM. Um, but whatever you choose, uh, the point is that you can move it from one cloud to another or on premise or wherever you wanna have it and not have to have the consumer change what they're doing. And if you can do that, 
you've got a lot of, of ability to control your costs, to be agile, and to make sure that you can move things uh, around and integrate things that are in different places. And, and this gets even worse uh, as an issue um, when you start to deal with microservices that may exist in multiple places. And uh, the last session that we saw was talking about ecosystems and partners who are doing the same thing and, and driving this across multiple different locations. So cloud and location transparency is another big driver for the use of API. The other thing they were just speaking about in the previous session was open banking. And open banking is just an example of uh, some um, uh, organization uh, or industry standards or regulatory requirements that are being done around the world. Uh, different geographies are, are doing this, different industries are doing this, um, and, and it's driving, again, the use of APIs for, for this purpose. Um, in some cases, it's regulatory. In other cases, it's market forces. Uh, it really doesn't matter whichever one it is. The point is that that uh, these industry movements are also driving the use of, of APIs. And then the last macro trend that I'll talk about is uh, use cases, just use cases that I'm seeing across all different industries. This is a topic that I've been talking about at ABI days for you know, God, five or six years now. Um, and I've written blogs that are linked at the bottom of this page about this. So. So what I've talked about with um, your previous audiences, and I'm not going to have the time today to get into the details on this, are the four business drivers for APIs and the seven use case categories. And, and these are the seven use case categories. So um, as I talk to businesses, many of them are thinking about doing mobile or user interface type things using APIs, social media, data and analytics. The other category deals with regulatory requirements like we were just talking about or sharing information across lines of business. And, and now we see more and more businesses talking about partnering and ecosystems, uh, use of public apps, and, and finally, as the seventh category, devices and, and Internet of Things. And so um, I've written about these in more detail. Uh, I'm not gonna have the time in this particular session to go into the, the methodology for identifying use cases, but that's what these blogs will take you through. And then I've also written uh, for every industry that I could think of um, sample use cases for getting started. So at this point, I'm seeing almost every business that I talk to has already started doing some of this. And so these initial use cases are, are happening in, in, in businesses around the world. Okay, so that's what's doing well. Uh, let's talk about what's maybe still a challenge in, in the area of, of the API economy. Um, and the first one, which I think is getting slightly better now, uh, is involvement of the business. Uh, so many companies that I speak to, the um, API initiative is driven out of the IT organization. And and there's you know reasons for that. I mean, it says API, which is a technical thing. And, and, and so the business people sometimes will push back and say, that sounds like a technical thing, go talk to the IT people. Um, sometimes it's the IT people not wanting to involve the business because they're afraid of the requirements that they're going to get and they're not quite ready to handle it yet uh, which is a fair statement um, but you know once once we've gotten going and we've got an IT uh, you know implementation going for APIs um, it is important to get the business involved and, and um, I do see businesses that that you know are treating this as an IT only concern they're, they're doing some things to get some value out of security out of the the cloud integration kinds of things that I just spoke about but they're missing the value of the revenue generation, the time to market, the, the things that really can drive significant value to the business uh, and to the company as a whole. And, and so a strong recommendation is um, it's fine to start with IT, but, but you definitely want to get the business involved. And you know, as, as I speak um, to many businesses, uh, there are business roles that need to be involved in this uh, from an API product manager perspective and things like that, which, which I've uh, talked about at other API Days conferences. The other challenge area that I find is monetization, probably one of the uh, areas that I find most frustrating uh, in, in, in talking to businesses because they, they hear about monetization, they hear about API monetization, and they think what this means is that uh, you're gonna have APIs and people are gonna pay you to use them. Um, that's not the right, right definition for, uh, for monetization. The, the correct definition uh, is driving revenue through the use of, of APIs. And, and so uh, one of those models or a couple of those models 
deal with somebody actually paying you for it. Um, but more of the models deal with indirect type of monetization where you get customers on board, you get more customers, you get more business. Um, in general, the way you deal with customers is not based on the number of times they interface with you or interact with you. It's based on the value that you provide to them and you want to get compensated for that value. And so monetization, if you think about it correctly, as the value that you provide and being compensated for that is a great definition and you can be very happy that your APIs will be very successful. If on the other hand, you believe the definition of monetization means that somebody's going to pay you for your APIs, oftentimes you're gonna be very disappointed. And so companies get disillusioned uh, when they find that they've got an API and nobody wants to pay them for it. Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you from my, all my journeys to different businesses, uh, I have found many companies that want to charge people for their IP, APIs, um, but not many companies that want to pay people for their APIs. So, um, so monetization with the right definition is good. Monetization with the wrong definition can lead to uh, unexpected uh, 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 expected results that don't materialize. And, and the same thing is true on the business side. If, if you're not involving the business, you're gonna have some issues there as well. So, so these are the areas that I still see challenges. I think it's getting better, um, but, but still not, not where I really like it to be. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention was uh, an analyst perspective of, of where is the API economy. So you know, I'm Alan from IBM, this is what I think. And by the way, the definition that I just mentioned for monetization is also, what the analysts are telling you. So if you ask Gartner or Forrester, they'll, they'll say the same thing. Um, this is the Gartner hype cycle. I don't know if you've uh, seen these things. There's a link at the bottom of this page to a Gartner site where you can get uh, the latest paper on this. And, and when a new technology is hitting the market, um, Gartner recognized that it goes through this particular hype cycle. And so there's some kind of a new technology and then we get into this peak of inflated expectations where we think it's gonna solve everything that we ever needed in, in life. Um, and, and then, of course, we find out that it doesn't solve everything that we ever needed in life, and there's a trough of solution. And, and then finally, we come out of that and figure out what it really is good for, and 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 you know what we can use it for, and we get you know good value out of this this technology. And, and so, API management and microservices have traveled through this hype cycle, and Gartner has put them um, API management currently in the slope of enlightenment, and microservices just kind of coming out of the trough of disillusionment. And I agree, I think this is what I would say is where they are as well. There was a big hype around both these things, APIs and microservices. Um, we're finding that it doesn't cure world hunger or the coronavirus or any of these things, um, but they are good for many things and we should use them appropriately. And so I'm happy that we're in this spot. I think this is the spot that we wanna get you know, to with our, our technologies and, and use them in the ways that they should be used to move our business forward. So, so it's a good news story that, that we're past the peak of inflated expectations through the trough of disillusionment and now we're getting enlightened about where things uh, can, can go. So one of the things I noticed, um, I wrote a, a, a blog at, in January of this year, so it's a long time ago now, uh, um, it seems like forever given the, the coronavirus, uh, about the state of the API economy and a lot of the content that's in this presentation uh, I covered in, in that blog. Uh, one of the things I noticed was that there are few people, fewer people talking about APIs nowadays. It's just not something that we hear about. Uh, you know, you don't see the number of things written about it that you used to. Um, and, and so I started to think about that. I said, well, what's going on here? Is the state of the economy, API economy strong or is it, you know, dying out? Is it past its fad and we're on to a new thing. And, and I think the answer is, um, when it's not a fad. Um, we're just not talking about it because basically we expect that we're gonna have APIs and we're talking about what we're doing with them now. So things like digital business or digital transformation are, are using APIs. That these are things that are uh, taking advantage of APIs to move your business into that next thing that you wanna do with your business. Artificial intelligence is often invoked through an API interface. Blockchain, you put things on the blockchain, you take things off the blockchain with APIs. And so we're not talking about APIs anymore. We're now talking about all the things that we can do with APIs to, to move our business forward. And so, you know, this is another st st statement that says, 
you know, why we think APIs are uh, really doing quite well in the market. Um, the other thing I noticed was that the definition of what an API is, is expanding. And, and, and I thought more about this as well. I said, you know, what's going on here? I, I mean, it's not just me saying this. I, I, would, I actually attended some API Days events and, and some other speakers from other businesses were saying what they were talking about with APIs and they weren't talking about the things that we, we used to talk about. So some parts of the definition have changed and some parts have not changed. So, so let, me, let me talk about what I'm, I'm, I'm seeing here. So the first thing, what's not changed, right? The idea of a business API, which is the term we should be using, not, not just API, um, is, is the concept of a simple to understand interface focused on a business recognizable asset, a product, an order, a customer, these kinds of things, providing it in a secure way, easy to consume, self-service consumption, customer facing, you know, all these good things. That, that's still what an API is or a business API. And that's not changing, right? So, so from that concept, conceptual perspective of, of APIs, an API is, is moving forward. What, what is changing is that it's not just one particular technology anymore. So we were talking about APIs and often the um, corresponding technology that we thought of with that was REST and JSON. You meant API, you said API, you meant REST and JSON. Or maybe sometimes you might have included SOAP and XML in that as a second option. Um, API implementation options are what's expanding, what's changing. and so. Now we want that same business API concept, but we want to have different modes that things can work in. Not everything is going to be a request re request response um, scenario. And so we may have events, asynchronous APIs. GraphQL is another hot item that people are talking about. WebSockets, RPC, maybe even files. So there's a lot of different technologies. And so we decouple the definition of API from the underlying technology and recognize that there are many technologies that can be used to deliver things in different patterns as we need them, which give us a better definition for APIs, a more complete definition that we can use the things that we need to use in the right ways to use them and not try to force fit everything into a particular pattern. All right, so a uh, quick run through on where we are. Uh, the next thing I wanted to spend the last few minutes on is where are we going? And, and, and so one of the things I spoke about um, for many years now is a maturity model that we created. Uh, we call it the API economy journey map. And, and, and I'm not gonna describe too much detail here, but this is the high level view of, of the model. And it goes through five stages of maturity from you know, just getting started, typically an IT led uh, kind of a scenario into a combination of business and IT working together to a business led kind of a, a scenario. And then where it says expanding to full digital market solutions uh, as the fourth layer, that's starting to be what I'm starting to see some businesses do with ecosystems and marketplaces and platforms, which is the next topic I'm going to speak about. Uh, we see even further steps with, with more dynamic kinds of things happening. The model itself, uh, just for completeness sake, I'll, I'll spend a second on it. We, we don't describe technology here in the sense of you know, what you implement, but rather how you behave. And so from a business and technology perspective, we, uh, we think about what businesses are like in each one of these five maturity levels across these different dimensions and factors. And we've defined what a business behaves like at those different levels. And then the question is, how do you move between the levels? And that, that's you know, what we do in discussions with you um, when you're thinking about moving forward. So let's talk about um, where I'm seeing this going. And almost every conversation that I'm having now with businesses is starting to talk about um, these more forward thinking ideas of ecosystems, marketplaces, and platforms. And uh, just at one of the previous API days within the last few months, I presented a whole session on this topic. I'm gonna try and do it now in under five minutes. So, um, so here we go. So you know, as you, um, in the past uh, had partnerships. There was a, a set of things that had to happen. Uh, you would establish a, a business relationship with your partner, right? the partner you cho choose to work with. And that could take weeks or months. And, and then once you were done agreeing with how you would work together as businesses, we would have a technology aspect where we would integrate something. We'd provide some kind of an interface to that partner that they could use to invoke our systems to get data or invoke transactions or do whatever they needed to do. 
And that could take weeks or months to set up as well to expose the interface, make sure it was secure, um, you know, make sure they could only see the things they were supposed to see, teach them how to use it, try it out, all the things that go into to doing that uh, you know, could take quite a long time. And so if we had another partner come along, we got to do the whole thing all over again, right? So weeks or months for the partner, for the business, weeks or months for the, for the onboarding uh, uh, and, and so on, for each one of the partners. Now, that clearly is not scalable, right? We can't you know, take weeks or months for everyone and have very large ecosystem. So the challenge is how do we speed that up? And, and you know, for today, uh, the, uh, on the business side, we still haven't quite finished that, that problem. We haven't fixed it. We're still taking quite a long time to onboard businesses as partners. But now that we have APIs, we have the ability to pre-build these interfaces that we need to, uh, to onboard a partner of a certain type. And so we can build those APIs, put them in a developer portal. And once we have the business relationship finished with the partner, all we have to do is give them access to these APIs. And hopefully, if we've done it well, they can do self-service onboarding to, to become uh, integrated with our uh, IT system. And the nice thing about that is when the second and third partners come along, we don't have to redo anything. We can use the same APIs for them. They're already there. They're already secured. They're ready and tested to go, and, and, and we can onboard them. So, so we've reduced the IT time required to onboard, but not yet the, the business side, right? So, so my next job as the strategist is to think about, okay, so where is this going to go? And, and you know, we may improve this from days to hours. You know, that, that may make some slight difference in some cases, but days is pretty quick and, and, and probably not a, a showstopper. The question is, how do I get my business relationship to happen in days or, or hours or very quickly um, and, and replicate that across multiple businesses? And, and that's, that's where we stand now at, at a challenge, right? So we've got the IT side of an ecosystem. I wouldn't say we've got 100% solved, but what we've you know, gone a long way to solving the IT side of, of, of this. We need to work on, on how do we create these business relationships faster. And, and what I'm seeing happening is these marketplace kinds of scenarios. And, and, and so um, let me define what I mean by that. Um, it, it, many businesses, again, that I'm speaking to want to be a marketplace. This is one of their goals that they, they want to, to drive to is to be a marketplace. So where it says your business, that's, that's your business wanting to be a marketplace and you have customers and, and your customers hopefully have a trust relationship that the banking uh, folks on the previous panel talked about it, the trust that somebody has in their bank to, um, to, to, you know, they're putting their money there, they better trust that you're gonna keep it for them well, right? So, so these kinds of trust relationships exist between your, your business customers and yourself. You provide banking, but maybe that's not the only thing that they need, or you provide retail and that's not the only thing they need. Whatever the things are that you do, they may need other things as well. And so you wanna to put together an ecosystem in a marketplace where your customers can come and get these other services as well. So maybe they need shipments. And, and so you may do some vetting and onboarding of uh, another business that does shipments and put their APIs into your marketplace. And, and maybe another one does payments. And there are many other things that, that your customers may need. And so by vetting and onboarding these other businesses, you're validating that these other companies are good businesses to do, uh, to do business with. And, and therefore, when your customers want a shipment situation or a payment situation, they can find it in your marketplace, validate that you already have vetted and onboarded them and with standard terms and conditions, create that business relationship with standard terms and onboard themselves with the APIs. And around this, again, in the longer presentation, there's a lot of monetization models for how this can all work and what you all do, but we'll leave it there for, for now uh, with this one. So I'm running out of time here. I'll, I'll just quickly finish up on, on platform. Um, platform is a word that um, has multiple definitions and it can be a little confusing. Um, so in IBM, we talk about an API management platform that is uh, performing life cycle management of APIs, secure, uh, building them, uh, securing them, managing them, you know, all those kinds of things. Our product is called API Connect. Uh, there's another definition which talks about bringing businesses together um, and, and having those businesses use APIs to basically run their business on the APIs that, that you provide for them. And, and 
in, in this context of this presentation, that's the thing I'm going to discuss. So uh, my management would love me to tell you more about our product, but we're not going to do that today. So in some cases, you can think of a digital platform as being the same as putting together the concept of a digital ecosystem and a marketplace, right? So you have the, the, the community that is needed to solve a particular situation and you have the ability to offer those services in a single place with a common set of onboarding kinds of characteristics. And, and this is what a lot of people want, right? So, so they wanna create a digital platform where others are coming in and, and, and this is you know, where the customers want to be uh, and this is the platform that you wanna have and, and life is good if you could get to this particular state. Um, Others will go even further and say, I want to build a digital platform that is greater than the sum of a digital ecosystem and marketplace. And what I'm thinking about here are, are companies that, that are actually supplying infrastructure and services or APIs that allow you to build your business on top of it. Uh, you know, things like uh, Amazon, Alibaba, eBay, uh, you can build your own business on top of these uh, capabilities without ever having to talk to anybody at that company uh, and build a, a very valid business that can make a lot of money using these services underneath it. And this kind of a marketplace is another, type, or platform is another type of, uh, of, of goal for some companies, right? So, so that's my view of where I see things going. Um, just sum it up here, you know, think about where we are today, we have these macro trends that are going on. I, I think the API economy has still got a long life ahead of it, um, but people are now starting to think about, you know, what am I doing with APIs? Digital transformation, AI, blockchain, things like that. Watch out for the common challenges, make sure that you get the business involved, make sure you understand your business models. And, and don't worry if you're not doing ecosystems, marketplaces and platforms yet, these, these are up and coming things that, that leading edge companies are doing, you know, get your foundation in place first. But if you if these are your goals, that's great. And, and understand what you can do uh, to get to them. And I'm happy to have further conversations with you about that. So uh, so I, I sum it up, API uh, economy is going strong and uh, we, we've got a, a lot of life ahead of us here where more and more things are gonna be built on it. I'm gonna just quickly throw through these last few slides that just as you can see them, Again, we're gonna give you all of these slides that have the links to everything that I've written. So, Patrick. Yeah, um, thank you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I would like to share that uh, Alan is very experienced and he has a lot of uh, papers, et cetera, so I also with that. So, suggest that everyone can check that. So, I am, um, I don't, although we are running out of time, but I'm not sure whether, uh, Alan, you can spend one minute to answer yeah, one question. Absolutely. It's, 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 yeah. it's very interesting. Uh, someone is asking, uh, have you ever seen the most interesting or weirdest use case in API. Do, do you have one or two, <laughs> one, one example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it can oh, be done one. in one minute. Oh boy, you, that's, you put me on the spot with that one. I usually hear the same <laughs> questions over and over again and I don't, I, that one is a new one. Weird APIs. Um, you know, I can't think of a weird API. Uh, I'll tell you what, what I think about bad APIs versus good APIs. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know what I see is people making a lot of mistakes and doing bad APIs because um, they don't think about what somebody wants from them. They think about what they have. And, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. you know I'm, I'm thinking about okay, I have a system that has this information in it. I'll just create an API in front of it. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and and that that negative you know that that bad practice is probably the number one mistake that I see businesses make. The weird APIs. I have to think about that one. Uh, good, good question. Yeah, Remember yeah, yeah. I think I, I think we can share about that, and then you, maybe you can write another blog on that one. So yeah, yeah. friends, Ellen, and.